Well, with Carmichael riding as fast as he is out front, the start has become a lot more important now. And we are off for the Thor Nationals. And Bailey looking into his crystal ball. It's Ricky Carmichael and Sean Hamlin going to the front for the hole shot. Uh, it looked like Wyndham got caught sleeping at the gate. So a bad start. This is the kind of start Reed needed, and Wyndham somehow snuck. I don't know. That was a miracle the way he went around the first corner to get himself into that position. He was about 15th going into the first corner. Billiman was way back as well, and he came out in good shape. Well, we've talked about the confidence for Chad Reed, number 22 on the Yamaha. This is exactly what he needs, running with the big dogs. It's Carmichael in first, number four. Number 14, Kevin Wyndham in second, and number 22, Chad Reed running in third. This is just what Chad needs to do is get a chance to ride with these guys, and he's going to learn from the two fastest riders in the world right now. Kevin, in these early laps, is dangerous. He can take it to Ricky. As soon as you give Ricky a, like, I don't know, 50-yard lead or so, he just seems you cannot seem to close that in. But in the early laps, he's very vulnerable, especially to a guy with fast as Kevin Windham. And this is something we haven't seen a lot of, Ricky Carmichael getting hole shots. Usually it's Carmichael in third or fourth working his way up through the pack and picking people off. But now Carmichael has the lead on the first lap. Kevin Windham, number 14 in second, is starting to threaten. Little mistake there by Carmichael. Kevin's setting him up. Carmichael on left, Wyndham on the right of your screen, and it's Wyndham taking the inside line. Ricky Carmichael loses it, and Carmichael comes right back but cannot close the door. We'll see the power they both got going up the hill, and it's back to Carmichael, number four. Wow, look at that. Carmichael just muscling his way back into the lead right there. Great move by Wyndham, but even a better move by Carmichael to come back in there and stop it. Keith Johnson already out of the race. Too bad for him, but look at the lead these guys already have. I, I think the best thing for Carmichael right now to, to keep Reed off of his tail is the fact that Kevin entered the series. Now he's so busy trying to beat him, he's putting distance on Chad. Well, no question about it. As Ricky goes for a tear off there, number four, your leader, Carmichael, having some psychological problems with Chad Reed during the Supercross season, just could not get his number. Now he's got to deal with Kevin Windham, and maybe that's the best thing for Carmichael. The champion, the defending champ here right now, looking very good, and if you can pull away from Kevin Windham, you're doing something right, and Wyndham just keeps coming right back. Now he's making Rick. See, Ricky's got to go over there and protect that inside. He's thinking about Kevin back there, and, you know, the, going back to the start, the fact that he got the hole shot, this is the first dirt start we've had so far. That might have made some of the difference. Plus, it's going up a hill, and that 450 is so fast, you can't even open it all the way up, or you'll wheelie. During the Supercross season, I would have said something like this with Chad Reed behind Ricky is going to cause problems, but for Kevin Windham, it almost makes Ricky ride better. Yeah, I think so. I think he's more worried about Kevin getting all this. Listen to the people. That's great. Sorry, Ricky, but so, <laughs> so a lot of that is for Kevin right now. Not because they don't like Ricky, just because it's so refreshing and they're so right. excited to see Kevin come back and, and do so well. We knew he could, but the fact that he's actually doing it makes it that much more exciting, and Ricky's over it. He's like, hey, I'm going for the all-time winning. It's record. Everyone's cheering for the wrong guy. Carmichael right now sitting at 89 victories, tied with the great Jeremy McGrath, looking for 90 today, and he's got his hands full with number 14, Kevin Windham out of Centerville, Mississippi, on board the Honda Factory Connection ride, looking very good. Here's a young man who took over a year off from the circuit, and here he is pushing the defending champion. Your leader, number for Ricky Carmichael. Well, he's a little bit more comfortable outdoors. I think the bike suits him a little bit better. Just, I mean, Kevin's proof of that. A lot of people are questioning whether David Billman should be on a four-stroke or not. And, you know, for the riders that drive like Kevin with a lot of throttle control and finesse, the bike is perfect. There is your running order from Mount Morris. We'll be back for more of the Thor Nationals after this. Welcome back to Mount Morris, Pennsylvania, High Point Raceway for the Thor Nationals AMA Chevy Trucks U.S. Motocross Championships. Todd Harris along with David Bailey and Cameron Steele. Injury. Yeah, and I, and I can, oh, Carmichael. Carmichael. Yeah, they're, they're definitely in a good battle with each other. It's hard to tell if they're friends or not, that by what they say anyways. There's the gap. Wyndham, the new leader. Ricky, that the lap, usually right after he makes a mistake, he just puts On together fire. a solid lap to get back in there and not give he cannot let kevin get confident or feel comfortable out there he'll go even faster and then it'll be really tough for ricky to catch him so number four ricky carmichael the factory red honda is in second place kevin windham has inherited first place and it's just as david bailey said it ricky carmichael is turning over a very fast lap david with this track with so much off camber does it favor one of these two riders more i you know that's a great question todd and, and the fact that that there are so many off cameras that are tough to get stopped for. I'd like to think that the 250, or even the 125 guys, that the 250 is going to be a little easier to stop. That 
at 450, the motor's bigger, you got a little bit of more inertia and gyro effect, and we try to lay that thing over and go the other way, it still wants to keep going straight, a little more than a 250 would. Kevin Windham absolutely lighted up the track with a 218.051. For more on that, let's check in with Cameron Steele, who's with John Hyland. How are the lap times big? Can Kevin stay ahead of him based on what you guys know so far? We're within, like, they'll be, like, dead even, two tenths. Ricky will take two tenths. Kevin will take three tenths back. They're all the right together. Thank you. All right. John Hyland, Kevin Windham's mechanic. And this certainly looks like a precursor to what we've seen the whole circuit long, all the way down to Delmont, Pennsylvania. Wyndham and Carmichael, one and two, two and one, they seem interchangeable. Right now it's Wyndham, number 14, out in front. Carmichael, number four, sits in second. Well, Ricky busted out a 216 to reel Kevin back in, so Kevin can definitely feel the pressure, which is something he used to struggle with. Ride a little tight or get arm pump or whatever, and he seems to be immune to that during his comeback, which is great because that allows him to ride at his potential, and Kevin's potential is pretty impressive. Well, that last graphic really tells the tale of the domination of Ricky Carmichael. His last overall loss came back in 2001 of July. That's almost two years ago, so the guy does not know that taste and certainly does not want it back. Carmichael sitting in second right now, trying to reel and win him almost too close on that last corner. Up the big uphill, you think... Ricky's got the the, uh, the corner speed. He's got to have that corner speed and get in there and just plow because he's going to get pulled a little bit up those big hills. So far, he's been able to make up a little bit more than he's losing. Wow, that's jumping down those stairs. It's, it's so off camber right there that your front end bottoms out and the front end deflects because you're landing on an off camber. It's, it's one of the sections that just takes sheer strength. There's nothing fun about that section. It's just pure technical. Look at that, the aggressiveness of Ricky. He wants to lead back right now. He's not satisfied to be patient. Carmichael launches himself back into first place, and Kevin Windham has to concede. Carmichael extremely fast, as David pointed out, turning to 2.16 on the last lap, and is Carmichael after a shortfall, brief time in the dirt here at Mount Morris, back on top, and now it's Kevin Windham's turn to try to reel in Carmichael. Yeah, it's hard to say if Kevin didn't just go, you know what, he's catching me anyway, let me just get back there and take the pressure off, put the pressure on him. It's Carmichael, Windham, Reed, and Ferry. Welcome back to the Thor Nationals, Mount Morris, Pennsylvania, near Morgantown, West Virginia, High Point Raceway. Todd Harris along with the champ, David Bailey and Cameron Steele. Race number one, it's Ricky he's Just up ahead of Ricky, but he had a broken femur, and he's still not quite up to par. He'll get it together. Well, Carmichael continues to move through traffic and pick up yet another victory. This time, the first race at Mount Morris, Pennsylvania, High Point Raceway. Are we going to catch that guy? Your winner, Carmichael, we'll be back and talk to him after this short break. Oh, well, that messes going. you up. When the guy next to you does that, it ruins your concentration, but Carmichael nailed it again. So Carmichael gets his second consecutive hole shot after picking one up in moto number one. Carmichael comes back and repeats in moto two. Kevin Windham knows exactly how dangerous this is. And it's deja vu all over again. Carmichael, Windham, and Chad Reed going one, two, and three here at the start of moto number two. Both Ricky and Windham deciding to double that big tunnel jump right in front of Chad and Villain. Chad was doing it, but he decided to lay up on the start, play it safe. Didn't lose much time. He's still in contact. I don't think he's going to lose contact with these guys like he did the first moto. He's going to see that. I think he's pretty frustrated with the way things went. He didn't look too happy. He and Tim Perry were giving each other a dirty look after the first moto. So he perhaps got a little more motivation this time. And Wyndham, once again, real dangerous in these early laps, forcing Ricky to ride perfect. Kevin Wyndham, number 14 on the factory connection. Honda, the big four-stroke, able to give him some great pulls on those long straightaways. Ricky Carmichael, a little more agile. He is on the two-stroke. Number four, your leader, Carmichael here in moto number two. Now, we heard Kevin talk about the, the second moto is the more important moto of the two, so that whoever gets this moto win gets the overall. This is where Kevin made his move on Ricky in the last moto on the first lap. History in the making. Ricky Carmichael looking for number 90, which would put him ahead of Jeremy McGrath with overall victory. He's currently tied with 89 with the great Jeremy McGrath and uh, Kevin Windham trying to spoil the party on both fronts. Oh, Ricky jumping in there a little crooked. You can see how off camera that all is. Look at Kevin just 
running over Ricky's foot everywhere. If he was to get the overall, it'd be just about as amazing as Ricky getting his 90th. Well, the folks at Honda have to be happy with this. Both of them out in front. Carmichael one, Wyndham number two. Chad Reed starting to lose contact with these guys once again. And David, is it just the speed and experience of Carmichael and Wyndham? I think it's the absolute pure riding ability of Kevin Wyndham and the intensity of Ricky Carmichael. These two have just, look at this. Nice move by Kevin. Wyndham makes a big run on the outside, does not cover the inside, and Carmichael comes right back. Yeah, Ricky was, he was able to see what was going on there and decided to just lay up and cut back to the inside. Kevin, I think, knew it. He used so much throttle going into that turn. Yeah, he knew Ricky was going to square back under him. That's why he was able to save it when they made contact. Ricky going for the double, Kevin lays it up. Every time Ricky gets away from him, Kevin reels him back in, so he's not right and tight this moto. Right now, let's check in with Cameron Steele. Well, John, not a fun position to be in. What happened? I don't know. I mean, I went around and did the parade lab. The bike ran fine, and I came down here, and it, it, I thought it stalled, but I wasn't sure. I kicked it. It started. Almost just like, I mean, it happened last week, too. I don't know. We had an electrical problem last week, and uh, it seems to be the same thing. There's no spark in the bike, so ignition just kind of decided to crap out right on the line here so i don't know i mean there's those things are weird like that they when they go they just go but uh man it's two weeks in a row i'm you know, a, little, a little bummed out about it now that's too bad for for john and the next round at southwick will be a, a track that'll be great for him and he was building some momentum heading into that but now he's just got to sit and watch and it's good if you're going to watch one this is the one to watch Certainly worth the price of admission. Carmichael on the left. He will lose the lead. No, he won't. He squares it off. Kevin Wyndham put himself in a perfect position, and Wyndham comes right back. Look at this. Carmichael is in the lead. Wyndham is in second. David, have you seen racing this close for a long time? Not in a while. Ricky's probably like, hey, get, get away from me, man. I'm supposed to be pulling away when I ride this hard. And, and this time, Chad Reed, like I was thinking, he's right there watching it. Well, Kevin Wyndham talked to Cameron Steele after the first moto about riding tight. Certainly not doing that here. He is right on the back end of Ricky Carmichael, your leader, moto number two. We'll be back with more after this. There's your running order. Number 90 here at Mount Morris. Looks like a little kid there. He shedded some weight, got a lot more serious, refined his skills, and has been unstoppable 89 times. Good to him, and he will remember this weekend for a long time. But Ricky said at the start of the show, David, the most important thing is the title. Oh, that's all under control right now. He keeps looking over to see where Kevin is. He's got one straightaway to go for the checkered flag, but he's won every moto except the first moto at Hangtown when Kevin checked out. With the points lead he has now, he can afford to let Kevin go sometimes. Pound for pound, the most tenacious, fastest rider on the planet, number four, your winner, Ricky Carmichael. Well, Kevin, 2-2 two, two today for second overall, your first podium since you returned. That's got to feel good. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm happy to uh, put behind the 450 and uh, all my sponsors, Factory Connection, No Fear, uh, Lee Dungaree Jeans, Alpine Star Boots, Harai Helmets, Michelin Tires, and Spy Goggles. Got a long list of guys who's uh, helping me get back in the scene, and you know, it feels good. I'm where I need to be. I mean, I, I've been off for a year and a half. I've got some things to work on, some polish, polishing to do. I'm riding against the winningest rider of all time, so uh, you, know, you definitely got to be on your toes, but everything's good. We'll, we'll, we'll be there. That second moto, it looked like you were right there. You guys had a little bit of a fray, and then it got away from you a little bit. Any, any thoughts on that? Why? Is it training? Is it, I mean, the track? Was it a little bit hard to ride the 450 as it got stiffer out there? Well, I think that it was mostly just me. I, I uh, was a little bit off this weekend, just a little bit. It may not be something you could see just by watching, but I just, you know, something wasn't clicking. I felt like I was uh, missing some of my ruts and stuff, and I was hanging it out to, to ride with Ricky and, and the staff there, and I just kind of was a little bit slow this weekend. And uh, that's what happens when you're riding a little tight. You, you pump up, and uh, you know I think my training's fine. It's been it's proven to be strong at every other race. Just this weekend, I was a little bit off, and it showed. Awesome job for a guy riding tight. I get second place. That's unbelievable. Yeah, you know, and just again, you know, it's great to be here, and I'm just stoked to be up on the podium. Thanks, Kevin. We'll see you at Southwick. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the winningest dirt bike rider of all time, 90 AMA wins. Ricky Carmichael, congratulations. Ah, thanks. I, I can't believe it. You know, uh, it hasn't sunken in yet. You know, it's uh, something that uh, I never intended on doing. And, you know, I just going out there and racing and, and working hard and uh, all that stuff comes, you know. Uh, 
you, just, you, you can't worry about that. And uh, what I did today is awesome. I, I'm happy to say I'm the best rider ever in the sport. And, uh, you know, I, I just can't believe it. You know, I got to thank my sponsors, everyone who's helped me get to this point from the beginning of my career till, till, till this current point right now. And uh, it was well, well worked for today. Kevin was riding really, really good. You were doing battle with Kevin Windham at the same time doing battle with history. How, how does that weigh on your mind? I mean, you're worried about maybe coming in with a block pass or two, Kevin, you and back, you yeah. and he back and forth, and then history at the same time. You know, uh, Kevin's an, an excellent rider, and uh, it was fun to race him. You know, kept it as uh, clean as we could to, to get the job done, and uh, you know, he's he, he's great. And uh, to be honest with you, I wasn't even thinking about the the record today. I was just uh, racing Kevin and, and trying to get a win and trying to build some points. And uh, you know, we uh, we checked out today and. Uh, we were the two fastest guys, and it was nice. I'm glad I came out on top, but uh, it's fun to race Kevin. Uh, you know, he's, he's an excellent rider, and uh, we're going to have a good series. This track is not its old nasty rough self, and you'll see that once they get out there. This is moto number one from Unadilla. We're set to go. Clean start, but this time number four is way back in the pack, and Danny, he took off his chest protector. I don't know if he thought he was going to get the whole shot, but Kevin Windham on board the four-stroke is all but gone. That's exactly what Ricky did last year, Todd. He had so much confidence getting that whole shot. He didn't wear it, and he got great starts, but today you can see he is behind a bunch of four-strokes, and I saw a Suzuki sneak up in there. Obviously not Pastrana or Tortelli. Right now it is number 14, Kevin Windham out of Centerville, Mississippi, who has taken the lead. He will lead them into the green flag lap, and as of yet, I have yet to see number four, Carmichael, come into view. That's a local privateer, Damian Plotz, riding in second place. It looks like uh, either Larry Ward or Kyle Lewis in third, and that Suzuki is Marco Dorch, just over here visiting from Europe. Ricky Carmichael finally coming into there. There he is, Carmichael finally dropping in, and he is back around seventh or eighth. There's Chad Reed sliding through as well, and Ezra Lust. Riders off the side. Saw that, that was Larry Ward took a little shortcut there. So Larry Ward pulls a bit of a crazy Ivan. He's back on the track, no harm, no foul. Ricky Carmichael, unbelievable, number four, sitting in 11th place. And Davey, I hope we haven't jinxed him with the streak. Well, I hope not too, and I tell you what, Kevin Windham being out front is the worst possible scenario for Ricky. From the moment Windham unloaded his bike here in Unadilla, he's been the fastest in practice, he's been the fastest on Sunday morning, and obviously with a whole shot and a clear track, this does not bode well for RC or that winning streak. Well, I hope the folks in the Carmichael camp have loaded up his Oakleys with a lot of tear-offs because he's going to need them. Carmichael just going through the pack right now, he's moving his way up, but you make a great point. Kevin Windham out in front is probably the absolute worst person that Carmichael could have leading. Here you see Windham coming past the mechanics area. Look, I just, I love watching him ride a dirt yeah. bike. We've missed that on the racetrack. And I know these Unadilla fans have too. A lot of signs out there. Go Windham, go K-Dub. And wow, look at that lead he's already got. Kevin Windham, number 14, on board. The Honda is absolutely flying through this. This is what we've done to custom has seen from number four, Ricky Carmichael. But today it is not the case as Carmichael now comes through, sitting way back in the pack, and his good friend Chad Reed right in front of him. Nice big wide track. Look at that. Unadil is unlike any other track, Todd. I tell you, the, the fans love it. If you're a traditionalist, if you're a new school guy, if you're a Carmichael fan or GP motocross fan, this doesn't get any better than this. Ricky Carmichael trying to track down Kevin Windham. The white flag is out. It looks like Carmichael may run out of real estate as Kevin Windham just got an amazing start. Ricky Carmichael just the exact opposite. He was top maybe 20 if he was lucky. Worked his way up. Did a heroic job of getting up to second. But today it's been all Kevin Windham in Moto 1. Yeah, I'll tell you what. This reminds me of Hanktown. Remember that great opening moto Kevin had? Now the big question, will he be able to come back and answer? Because Carmichael... We don't see him on the ropes very often, but when he gets on him, he fights back. And uh, wow, he's going to have his work cut out for him. You see Wyndham waving to the fans. You know, this may not be very close to Mississippi, but he's got a lot more he's fans. He's got all the momentum. He's proven he could beat him. He's proven he could do the faster lap. Now he's just got to hold it together in between motos. And I don't know. A lot of pressure in the second moto for Kevin Windham. A lot of pressure on Kevin Windham as he takes the checkered flag and the win here in moto number one. And a lot of pressure on Ricky Carmichael. Will the streak of 21 overall national wins continue or will it end here at Unadilla? Sideways, we are set to go racing. This is moto number two, stop number seven 
from Unadilla. And it looks like Carmichael much better start on the inside, and right there goes Wyndham. Kevin Wyndham just sweeping in like a vulture on its prey from the outside, drops in on Ricky Carmichael's world, and Carmichael back into third. There's Chad Reed, number 22, on the outside. While he's concerned with that, he's got more Yamaha issues. Yes, David Billiman swept in on the inside of the same kind of pass he used on Reed in the first motor, but this time he did it in traffic. Look at that, Wyndham already getting a little room, but Carmichael is right there. Whoa! Big jump out of gravity cavity, man. That's got to hurt when he lands. It goes around the outside, and now this is it, Todd. This is what we've been waiting for. So the Cobra getting into the fray early on sits in third, but your leader, the man who won motor number one, Kevin Windham, and he is looking to make history today here at New Berlin, New York, Unadilla. Will the streak be broken? Ricky Carmichael, 21 overall national wins. It may be coming to a close, courtesy of KW. Todd, who's got more pressure on him? Wyndham to break the streak or Carmichael to keep it? I'd have to say Ricky Carmichael right now. I think in the back of his mind, losing is the first and foremost thing. He does not like that in one bit. But Kevin Wyndham, he seems so easy, so loose. And unlike Sampson, cutting the hair off has not sapped his power. You can see he's already starting to open up a little bit of a gap, just like the first moto. The first moto is Damian Plotz. This time, he's pulling Ricky Carmichael. Look at that lead. So number 14, Kevin Windham in first. Ricky Carmichael sits in second, and he is certainly has the attention right now of Kevin Windham. Carmichael trying to get his way back up there and make this one close. He definitely does not want to let that four-stroke check out on him like he did in photo number one. See, the track's gotten a little rougher, too, but again, that big 450 Honda just eating up those big hills. and. Uh, Carmichael looking a little more ragged than Kevin, although he did a little dab right there at the top of the wall, dropping down in. And he looks aggressive today. Wyndham's last big win was in 1997. He was on board a 125 right here at Unadilla. Will he make it again and make history on the 250? And right now he is looking phenomenal. See him coming around, takes a little glance back to see where RC is, and RC much closer than he was at any point in that first moto, other than maybe when they were in the stage. And back to racing action here at Unadilla, Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. Todd Harris along with Davey Coombs and Cameron Steele, and your leader here in moto number two is Kevin Windham. Ricky Carmichael is hard on the gas, but Davey, we've seen this before. Can he reel in number 14? The lead, let's check in with Cameron Steele, who's with John Hyland. Well, Jonathan, how's the stress level right now? Looks like Ricky's coming up on you guys just a little bit. Does Kevin likes to relax mid-moto? Uh, well, it seems like Ricky will catch him, Kevin will pull away. They're just doing back and forth, back and forth. Uh, they're both pushing each other real, real hard right now. The, this moto is faster than the, than the first one by far. Every time you hear a four stroke over there, your head swivels. I'm going to let you go. Thank you. You know, Todd, I think part of that is because on this side of the valley where the mechanics are, it's a little more technical. And I think Carmichael's going faster, but when you get on the far side and Wyndham lets that big dog eat going up those hills, he goes around the outside. I think that's where that horsepower advantage is really coming through. So that's why we're having sort of this push and pull in the front in the battle between Wyndham and Carmichael. You're in charge is what that pit board said. And, uh, I can apply to two men. Right now, Ricky Carmichael looks to be in charge. As Davey pointed out, he looks very fast in that technical section, starting to close the gap in on Kevin Windham. And Ricky Carmichael is in the race of his life. Does the streak live on, or does it die here at Unadilla? I'll tell you what, he's got to stay with Windham. He let him get away in the first moto. Much better start this time, but see the tension on Jeannie Carmichael. They are Unadilla Valley Sports Center Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championships. Todd Harris along with the famous Davey Coombs and Cameron Steele, and we have got a battle royale at Unadilla. Ricky Carmichael, who lost the first moto, took second to Kevin Windham. His streak is in jeopardy, and he is behind Windham once again, and a lap rider. Yeah, and believe it or not, those last two lap riders they passed were guys who finished in the top 10, Kyle Lewis and John Dowden. Look, Ezra Lust, they just lapped him. These guys are in a war, and I tell you, the, whoa, you see a fan out on the track. Holy smokes. Get off but, the tracks like running of the bulls. Yeah, but Carmichael has given Wyndham all he wants, but Wyndham is answering. I tell you, the old Kevin Wyndham, the one that quit a couple years ago, would not still be leading this race. Kevin Wyndham has absolutely set the track on fire today, and Ricky Carmichael has of yet had no answer for KW and number 14. You see Rick, Ricky just like Ferry in the first moto using every inch of the track, but 
Wyndham just riding smooth out front. I'm very impressed. Look at that. Just flying around that corner. See Carmichael looking for her way around Ezra Lusk. Lusk probably not used to seeing a blue flag. These guys are definitely on a track by themselves today. Way out in front of everyone, taking the battle. White flag out, Carmichael is running out of time. Ricky Carmichael is one lap away from the 21 overall national win streak being broken here at Unadilla. And I can guarantee what's going through his mind right now, not only does he not want to lose the overall, but he does not want to have to answer questions when it's all over about what went wrong. And right now, Ricky Carmichael, as Davey Coombs pointed out, he is running out of real estate here in New Berlin, New York. And I tell you, that 211 on that lap is a very, very fast lap for Carmichael. He's letting it all hang out here. He's got a 50-point lead, nothing to lose in the championship, but he doesn't want this streak to end. But look at this. Wyndham is like the ice man. He has not made a single mistake today, although it looks like his boot buckle has come loose there on the brake side, but it's not going to slow him down now. Kevin Wyndham is almost on a virtual parade lap. Look at that last lap time. He matches Ricky Carmichael and goes beneath it by almost a full second. So Kevin Wyndham certainly not resting on his laurels here at Unadilla. He is absolutely taking this track by storm, and he is going to send a statement, not given, taken. And that's exactly what Kevin Wyndham has done today. Ricky Carmichael cannot come out and say, I fell, I had this. Kevin Wyndham just flat out beat the fastest man in the world. I tell you what, Carmichael's streak lasted longer than the Miami Dolphins winning streak. It lasted longer than four U.S. presidents. I personally thought it was going to go at least to the end of the year, but it looks like it's got about a half lap left. Well, September of 01 was the last win for Kevin Windham, and he is well overdue. Kevin Windham is on his way to picking up a huge victory here at Unadilla. He's done it before on the 125, and here he is on the 250. It's a win-win for the folks at Honda. It is, it is. You see the factory connection guys out there on the track giving them the go-ahead. You hear the fans yelling. This is not a boo for Ricky Carmichael. This is a cheer for someone else getting up there and beating him. And, you know, why not Kevin Wyndham? It's so good to have him back in the series. It's faster than ever and now just a corner away from, from breaking something that has just been phenomenal in this sport. Well, the sting of defeat will last with Ricky Carmichael for a week. But what a breath of fresh air. Kevin Windham has done it. He has dethroned the king in Ricky Carmichael. The streak is over. Number four will have to settle for second place today. Look at that. Looks like Ricky doesn't want to stop. He just went by a checkered flag. Uh, well done, Ricky. Well done. A classy move by both gentlemen. Kevin Windham reigns supreme today in his performance. Well, ladies and gentlemen, when you talk about a comeback, you come back because you think you can win, you try to win. The last time you won a motocross race, Steel City 2001, you're also the last rider to beat Ricky Carmichael heads up in a 250 race almost two years ago at Washougal. Which is sweeter, the comeback trail coming together for you, beating Ricky's, I mean, rain? I mean, what, where does it fit in? The emotions must be going crazy. They are, you know, it's uh, it's so wild to, to go out there and ride a lap after, you, after you've just been hanging it out for 35 minutes and to see the excitement around the crowd and everything and uh, I don't think it's in exactly what it means, you know, I mean, he's been so phenomenal, just so unbeatable and, uh, and I'm, just, I'm just stoked that it's me up there doing it, you know, I think that, you know, I did a lot of soul searching, I did everything I could to uh, try to get myself back and uh, it's just a sign that I think that I did the right thing, you know, and uh, you know, the way that my sponsors have, have my uh, program structure with Factory Connection, Honda, No Fear, Lee Dungarees, and my wife and my baby, the way they can come around and stuff, it's just an awesome feeling for me and everything's just right on par. No one's ever doubted the fact that you're one of the most unbelievable riders ever to ride a motorcycle. You come right out of Glen Helen and, and you're like right in the mix. Were you surprised? And do you think it just took a little bit of time for you to really get in your groove in the races? I mean, we're not that far into the season. Yeah, I mean, I've only actually raced that bike, you know, out here in the uh, series, you know, and the Honda 450 is incredible, but there, there's so much that goes on. There's so many good, good riders across the world, you know, but when you get behind that gate, it's a whole different deal, you know, and I think that it took me a little while to get going. When I didn't have it going, I didn't get discouraged. I just kept plugging apart, and uh, it paid off for me now, you know. It's, it's not time to get cocky. It's time to go out there and just keep working. He's an incredible guy. I had I had better lap times than him today, and he knew it. I knew it because of the lap times. And still, he did not let me go, you know. He just kept fighting and fighting and fighting, and that's what he does. I learned something from him whether I beat him or not, so, you know, today was a learning curve. Fortunately for me, I just came out on top. RC, what a run it's been. Ah, uh, it has, man. It's been great. You know, it, uh, 
Kevin's the last guy to beat me on the 250s and outdoors at least and he beat me today you know uh, he was riding good and there's nothing I could do I mean he got the whole shot and I was second and then Reed got by me so I was third but I was able to get by him and uh, just trying to chip away laps I mean that guy was on a rail and uh, I was twisting that sucker as fast as I could go and he was better. You're ever the gracious champion. A great job today, Ricky. Second place left in the Scott Pat. Unbelievable job. Uh, thanks a lot. You know the Honda was running good today. I, I think I was the only two-stroke in sight, so, so that's nice. And uh, It was a good day. And uh, All good things come to an end, and it came, came today. And uh, you know, I'm just going to go back, regroup, and uh, try to get it going. Thanks, Rick. Thanks. Yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of psychological stuff going on between Carmichael and Wyndham right now. Well, the Suzuki starting grid has told you who is on the line, and we've got a great day of racing. We're off and running at Washougal. Big wide left-hand turn into no one's surprise, or maybe to everyone's surprise. Number 14, Wyndham, up in front. Carmichael in second place. So it's Carmichael and Wyndham going two and one, respectively, and the fans are turning it up. Beautiful line of Kevin Wyndham up into the first corner. Just He's able to drift wide, protect the inside of the next corner as he headed up the first jump. Just laid that thing flat. Looked like James Stewart as he went up to the jump to stay low and get all of that horsepower of that 450 down to the ground. But he's got Carmichael knocking on the door. This is what we all wanted to see right here. All right, Coach Bailey, if you're Kevin Windham's coach, do you tell him to relax and just take it easy? Or if you're Ricky Carmichael's coach, I guess the word is don't panic. Yep, if you're Carmichael, be patient. Don't let him go. Keep him in sight. Don't let him get too much confidence going. But, you know, for Wyndham, just keep having fun. Throw that thing sideways, you know, and have a good time out there. Anchor yourself into a type of a psychological situation to where it's, it's what you do during the week. And these guys pitch the bike sideways over the jumps during the week and have a little bit more fun out there. They need to do that to the race, too, if it helps them relax and ride to their potential. You see, pretty much neck and neck until they got into third gear. Kevin started to pull Ricky a little bit. That's his bike right there. Kevin Windham, number 14 out of Centerville, Mississippi, is your leader here in moto number one, the 250 class. Number four, Ricky Carmichael, the defending champion. And I'll tell you what, Windham is starting to pull him. Here's so important at this track because everyone runs about the same pace. You look at the lap times and they're very close compared to other tracks that are a lot rougher, take a little bit more skill and thought and timing and line choice. Here it's, it's very, you gotta be, it's like car racing a little bit more. There's your running order back to Washougal in just a moment. Ferry paid the price for it. He needed to be leaning over a little bit more right there, but I don't think he expected Ferry to cut it that sharp. And Kevin, his lines have been incredible, just like I figured he would be able to do here at Washougal, master of lines. But he's just so graceful, Todd. I mean, everything he does is so fluid, so pretty. Coming around to the checkered flag right now. It'll be three in a row. Kevin Windham making his way through the majestic conifers of the Pacific Northwest. And what a beautiful backdrop for the winner in moto number one. So we talk about streaks. We talk about Ricky Carmichael's streak. Folks, Kevin Windham is on a streak of his own. That's three for three for Windham. Well, this is moto number two from Washougal. Kevin Windham got the first victory. Let's see, David, if he can put this one to bed. He doesn't get the start this time. It's a good start, but it looked like Kyle Lewis stole it from him. Heath Voss in there, too, and Nick Way on a 250. Amazing. He was able to get that kind of a jump on all the factory riders. So the Yamahas certainly got a chewing out after. They're sitting in second and third right now, but it's number 23, the Michael Jordan of motocross. Kyle Lewis out in front, and Lewis looking very sharp. But in the outside, there's number 14, Kevin Woodham. Look at that move he puts on him. Tried to. It's a good idea anyway, but Nick's is a little too clever for that. He's not going to give it up that easy. And it, Kevin's smart, man. You got to attack right now. That's what made McGrath so impressive in Supercross and Ricky so impressive all these years. And now James Stewart, as they attack immediately, they don't let riders settle in and get comfortable before they attack. Well, it gets him this time. Wyndham gets around Nick Way. And now it is Kyle Lewis in front, Kevin Windham, and looks like Windham's coming up fast. Lewis, your leader, Kevin Windham in second, Nick Way sits in third. Looks like Lewis did a little wave at the fans or somebody he might, oh, that could have been ugly. He's waving at the crowd as he went off that jump, lost his focus, made a mistake, and he's now not in the lead. So that's what you get for waving at the fans a little too early. This is Bubba-esque. Kevin Windham was 
poor on the start, having been back in the pack and not what he's accustomed to. And look at the lines. You talked about his beautiful lines out here through the trees. He is just flying through the shadows. Well, he took a little bit of a risk going out way out wide like that in front of Kyle, but he just shot out of that outside line and put another couple bike links on him. Kyle is... He's going to get a lesson right here how to go fast at Washougal. He's, he thought he rode well here last year. He did. He's, he's up front now, but about another lap and a half, he's not going to see Kevin anymore. The riders in front of him think. And he got really quickly up into second place in Unadilla from a terrible start. I mean, coming around the first corner, he was about 14th, and he was in second immediately. So if he doesn't do that here, Kevin's gone again, and I have a feeling he may just be gone anyway, even if Ricky was in second. And Kevin Wyndham as well, if he can put together these two motos and back-to-back -back overall wins, four motos in a row, get the ball rolling, as soon as he gets that momentum, he's got a basically a three-week break until the next race, which is a track that really suits Ricky Carmichael. So I, I wonder if he's able to put this together, if he just wishes he could continue on racing. It's, what's impressive is the fact that He's gone, and the battle for a second, really, they're all right there, including Ricky Carmichael. And welcome back to Washougal. We're in the final moments of moto number two, and it has been the Kevin Wyndham show. Wyndham may get the keys to the city, but right now he's looking for the overall, and he is the leader, and he's all the way gone. He railed that right-hand berm right there in those shadows, so perfect. He, just, he bounced out of the berm into the next corner. Well, this should be fun. They battle through Supercross Series all the way down to Las Vegas. This is Carmichael and Reed. Reed number 22 on the Yamaha. Carmichael number four on the Honda. Not the best of friends, but they show each other respect. And this time, Ricky Carmichael just takes what he thinks is his. He was making so damn much noise back there. I think he intimidated Chad. His elbow was touching his knee. He was so wide open on the gas. He gets rid of a couple tear-offs. All right. I could go even faster now, Chad, now that I can see. Yeah, I don't think Chad's going to let him go. This is going to be a good fight. It, it's been a while since it's been this late in the race where Chad's Michael had a James Stewart. Let's talk about the streak that looks to be apparent for Kevin Windup. This could be four straight. How perfect. I mean, every line he's got just crosses over a slick spot. He's making his own racetrack. Watch this. Just lays it over. Beautiful. I, mean, I, I can't. When I'm talking about Stewart in the 125 show, I mean, it's hard for me not to overdo it. You know? And, and, you can't blame me, right? It's the final lap for Kevin Windham. There he's standing up just a little bit, but he's back into his rider position, and uh, he's probably wondering, where is everyone? He has absolutely run away with this race. Kyle Lewis got a great start. Give him credit, but shortly thereafter, Kevin Windham came through the trees and took the lead and has not looked back, except just to find out if he's all by himself here in Washougal, Washington for the Scott USA Nationals. So Kevin Windham continues his streak, make it four in a row, and Windham... As Ricky Carmichael finally comes into view, Kevin Windham finally sees some competition. Carmichael unable to close the gap at the very end, and Kevin Windham will pick up another victory. RC. Well, Ricky, a second place hard fought battle with Chad Reed there, but I want to ask you I, mean, I can see your face as well. You talk about the bee stings. Are you allergic? Yeah, I'm allergic to him. Any kind of bites like that, I just swell up. But, man, no excuses, Kevin. Kevin wrote good. I got a bad start and had to work up through the way and then got behind Chad and uh, working, working, working to try to get by him. And finally I did. It took me a little long to get by him. And maybe I could have closed him. But I tell you, man, Kevin is just riding unreal. Uh, looking forward to going to Millville. It could be a little more even playing ground. And I really like that track. And I like this track. I just got beats and uh, got to pick it up. Well, great ride, Rick. We look forward to the battle when we get back east. Ah, uh, thanks a lot. You know, I just got to thank uh, Honda, Dunlop, Fox, Oakley, everybody that's helped me get up here, man. It's uh, this is what it's about, you know, battling it out like that, and uh, you know, trying and trying, and it makes it that more gratifying if you can win a championship with good guys. In it. Well, four moto wins in a row. Kevin Windham, K Dub in the house. I guess it takes a little while to get your momentum going on a comeback. It looks like the freight train is rolling, or should I say, the 450 is rolling. Absolutely, man. That thing uh, was working incredible today. And all my sponsors, everybody just been staying with me, and I uh, really appreciate it. And it's been, I, I keep referring to it, but man, I'm just having time of life, and it's, it's such a good time to be back, and uh, it just feels incredible. I'm on top of the world. Yeah, you haven't lost the moto since you cut your hair, so I, I think you'll be keeping it high and tight for a while, eh? Definitely, you know, uh, 
I don't know what it is, and that probably don't have much to do with it, but if it works, it works. I'm not going to change a good thing, you know. Run with it. Great job today, Kevin. It's fun watching your ride. Thanks a lot. Remember, this is Moto number two. Carmichael won Moto one. Chad Reed was in second. Reed didn't get the whole shot, but it's going to be a different story here. Ricky Carmichael to the front of the pack, and Ricky Carmichael gets the whole shot. Thank you for playing, everyone. Have a nice day. Ricky Carmichael absolutely loves Millville. Loves Millville like a fat kid loves cake. <laughs> you said it, not me. I'll tell you what, it's amazing to think that Carmichael, this is how focused he is after loss. This guy, you don't want to make mad. You know, there's certain riders over the years that if you get them mad, forget about it. Good night, everybody. It's over with. That was Hannah, Rick Johnson, just to name a couple. David Bailey. The difference is, I don't know if I was that fast when I was mad. I was just always known for being smooth. I never rode with the kind of intensity that we see from Ricky Carmichael or Hannah or Johnson, for that matter. That's how those guys were able to beat me when they did. And the difference this time is you've got Kevin Windham right back there. Kevin, from what I heard, he was able to take a little time and go down. And I heard he raced the local race in Florida and tried to spend some time in the heat to prepare for this event, knowing that Carmichael would be strong. And here he has this opportunity to prove if that preparation during the time off was any good. Well, Ricky Carmichael looking very cool right now. I'll tell you, the folks over at Fox, Pete Fox and the boys, keep him looking sharp. And Carmichael, the heat does not seem to affect him at all. Meanwhile, Kevin Windham in his second place. We can tell you that earlier in motor number one, when he took on board that water, he had a mouthful of roots, so he was just trying to rinse that out. It doesn't look like he was regurgitating. But Windham looking much better here in motor number two, number 14, on board the Honda, sitting in second. Well, he's, he's gotten the start that he's much more accustomed to. His starts this year have just been incredible. You got to look at percentages. I think he's winning in that category. But Carmichael still on that 250, able to beat him off the line. I think that's pure focus, desire, and it, demanding that whole shot, and also the fact that he's pretty light. He's able to, to light it up out of that gate. And you know, if he was uh, about 20 or 30 pounds heavier, like somebody like LaRocco would say, in the back end of the round, trying to roost some of the Honda guys, having fun with this. And, I guarantee you when he gets to the podium, he's not even going to be tired. These guys that are finishing fourth, fifth, sixth, they're going to be exhausted and looking to jump in that river when it's over. So what you're saying, David, is Ricky Carmichael's pretty good. He's awesome. His <laughs> record shows that. Ricky Carmichael, your winner in moto number two. By virtue of that win and the win in moto number one, he is your overall leader. It's better for Kevin Windham. So I'm anxious to see if he's able to get back in there and give Ricky a little bit of pressure. 30 board is sideways, and we are racing in Binghamton, New York. Moto number one in the 250 class. Number 14, Kevin Windham emerges from the pack in the front. He'll get the whole shot with Ricky Carmichael right off his backside. And they went to that corner like it was the last lap. Ricky around the outside, so aggressive, already pitching the bike sideways to stay low. Any little advantage to attack Kevin right away, let him know that, hey, last week, get used to it. Everyone's going to get beat from now on. I think he was irritated with his four moto losses, and he's coming right back and challenging Kevin. Here comes Carmichael to the inside. He takes over the lead from Wyndham. Wyndham slides into second place with the two Hondas going one and two with Carmichael, your leader. Kevin Wyndham in second place, and this is shaping up to be a great battle. The folks here at Broom Tioga are certainly going to get their money's worth. Now the, the big part, I think, for Ricky is just besides wanting to reestablish himself as the leader of this pack and... Uh, those four motos, ah, that was a fluke. Those were good tracks for you. But the rest of these tracks, buddy, I'm going to beat you. The other reason is that you want to stay out of those rocks. I noticed that Kevin's line is just a few feet off to one side or the other, so he doesn't get beat up with rocks the whole time. Wyndham trying to stay out of the roost of Ricky Carmichael. What I like about this, though, is Wyndham is not losing him. Look at this. Wyndham goes to the inside, a perfect line, gets on the throttle. Here he comes out of it. Carmichael back in his position, but this is going to be a great race. Kevin Wyndham is not being dropped by Carmichael. Ricky protecting that inside. So hard to get stopped for that corner. And again, you see that Kevin just crossing over the line, back and forth of, Car of Carmichael. If you get behind and get hit by one of those rocks, and I broke a finger there and uh, had my lens pop out of my goggles from getting hit in the face. And I love this new section. Big air time, a lot of speed. That does remind me a little bit of Millville. I talked about the track's a lot different. The hill is about the only thing that I can see that is the same, but the soil is completely different. That deep, loamy stuff, I think, good for Kevin. Well, this is a fantastic spectator's viewing venue here at Broom Tioga. As David pointed out, that long speed straightaway, big air. Carmichael and Wyndham both airing it out, and the two Hondas are having their own private battle. Kevin Wyndham in second. Ricky Carmichael, your leader here in moto number one.
Kevin already starting to lose some time, and I think he's trying to figure out, let's see, let me, let me try to keep an eye on Ricky, see what's going on, get a feel for the pace, stay out of the rock. It's it the pass, David. He's a little sloppy at the moment, losing time. Ricky just muscling his way in there, going, yeah, whatever. You, you, you think you're going to come back and rebound after a bad week, and I'm here to tell you that it's going to be a little harder than you thought. Carmichael leads Wyndham into the foliage here at Broom Tioga Sports Complex. We have got a great race. And give Kevin Wyndham credit, David. He is not losing sight of Ricky Carmichael, something that most of the crowd is unable to do. Well, this is the lap, or the, the section, rather, where he got so close to Ricky before, or different lines. About the same as he was the lap before. Ricky protecting that inside still. Kevin's got to do something pretty amazing to put a pass on him here. This time, Wyndham hard to the outside, crosses over. Carmichael's line, does he have the drive coming up the hill? Unbelievable. Carmichael staying on the inside, holds him off. But Wyndham is right there. Kevin Wyndham, he is on the four-stroke. Carmichael on the two-stroke. Both of them right at Honda's as they make their way down to the speed zone. They dropped out of sight there. It looked like Kevin was flying a little too far to the right. But you know what I like to see here is that Ricky went out and just decided, okay, I'm going to get this lead, look like anyway, he's going to get the lead and just try to pull away and break the spear to Kevin, but they've dropped third place, the crowd is into it, and Kevin is putting the pressure right back on Ricky, so he needed that first lap to get sorted out, figure out some lines he was going to use to be able to stay within contact with Ricky without getting roosted, it seems to be working right now. How appropriate that our top two overall the standings are out there having their private battle here in Binghamton, New York, round number 10. Kevin Wyndham, who sits second overall and has two overall victories in the circuit this year, and Ricky Carmichael, your leader. I see Ricky making a little mistake right there, getting into that soft firm. You don't usually see him get caught like that, a little bit off guard, but maybe he's being pushed a little bit outside of his comfort zone right now. I don't know if he'll be able to respond to this. I mean, I know he can continue to go this pace, but I think he went out as fast as he could go. I don't think he's got much more than that. If Kevin realizes that, that should do a lot for his confidence. I think this is working on the psyche of Ricky Carmichael, who usually is able to check out and drop guys. He's unable to shake Kevin Window. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. If he's got a little sideways right there. I think he's starting to think about what he has to do to hold Kevin back instead of just going fast. So Carmichael has to continue to listen to the loud, thumping sound of that four-stroke that sits about a bike length off his back fender. And Kevin Windham. Number 14 on board the Honda is making life miserable in Binghamton for Ricky Carmichael right now. And usually it's the other way around. Look at Wyndham. There he goes. He gets the pass done. Still goes wide. Oh, Carmichael goes down. David, just too much speed coming on that hill. Hey, there goes Billiman into second place. Here comes Reed and has the entire team Yamaha. A couple of the guys getting by him, so that'll really make it tough on Ricky to try to get back up and win this moto. He put himself in position to win the overall, but the way Wyndham was riding early there, I have to think he's gone now. Third, Ricky Carmichael in fourth. Let's look it up one more time. Wyndham so strong through this section. Kept getting close. The first two laps he was close. Finally puts the pass on him. And then he has brave enough to go to the outside and just sort of tease Ricky a little bit like, yeah, go ahead and come on in for the block pass if you want. But Ricky decided right there, I better not make contact. Got really hard. It hurts. They've done so much with this place, though. Since I used to race here, this downhill was all dry and rocks the size of baseballs everywhere. Now, look at the signage and uh, what they've done with the, the soil on the racetrack, the crowd. They've trimmed all the trees up. This place is spectacular. Good point. And for Carmichael, it really comes down to the second moto. Kevin Windham, though, will celebrate in moto number one and a victory here at the Broom Tioga Sports Complex. I think Kevin's very comfortable here at Broom Tioga. He's comfortable on the soil. Millville was a different deal. That's like the Daytona, you know, the, for Ricky Carmichael for the outdoors. But uh, here, he's got a real challenge on his hands with Kevin Windham. He can still pick up the overall, but he won't pick up any more points. So Ricky Carmichael has to settle for second. Windham gets the victory. Back to Binghamton in just a moment. Better have some big punches to throw because Windham is on his game today. This is moto number two from Binghamton, and we are off and running. Look for number 14, Kevin Windham. He's on that big four-stroke trying to get another hole shot. Will he make it two in a row? This time it's Ricky Carmichael. As David Bailey predicted, he comes out swinging, but he's got Kevin Windham right behind him. So it's Carmichael and Windham as they go into the first turn. And except for last weekend with Windham's start, these guys have pretty much been getting all the hole shots all year long. They got it wired. Cement, dirt, it doesn't matter. The crowd 
they don't really have to hope for a battle between the two best guys. They, they get that right off the bat, it seems like, at every national so far this year. It's Carmichael in first, Windham in second, Chad Reed on the Yamaha in third, and this time Carmichael trying to check out and away from Kevin Windham, does not want to leave anything to chance. You see he's changed into the black box gear after that face full of roost he got from David Villeman. Carmichael leads on board the Honda, number four from Florida, behind him from Mississippi. That's Kevin Windham, number 14. Windham trying a new line this time, David, going to the outside. Well, this is the section where Ricky was always losing time, and if he doesn't get a good approach, ruins his momentum around the corner. So once again, Kevin applying the pressure at the top of the racetrack. This is the corner where Ricky went down. Windham will square back underneath him. Here they come down the downhill again, just like before. Windham on the outside, number 14, Carmichael, number four, picking his way through those ruts, and this time it looks like Windham's got the line, but Carmichael once again dancing to the inside, and Windham using the power. Look at the drive up the hill. Carmichael using the very edge of the racetrack right there. He'll try to stay just a little bit lower, and Windham putting the pass on him, so Ricky's gotta be like, man. What is it going to take today to beat this guy? I think he's just got to stay with him. If he can stay on two wheels, he, he can certainly beat him. Windham on board the big four-stroke, using the power coming out of those turns and just driving up and down the hill. Carmichael on the two-stroke, a little more nimble, trying to dive in and out from Windham. And this is something that Ricky does not want to see, and that's letting the big four-stroke of Kevin Windham pull him out of these big, sharp ruts. Look at Ricky, the front of his bike is getting showered with all those rocks. Just next time you're at the batting cage, you just imagine being in there, you know, just, just throw on a little bit of gear and a helmet. Just have about four or five of those baseballs coming at you at 75 or 90 or however fast they can come Maybe toss some gravel in with that and some dirt. <laughs> and then try to concentrate. You know, that's what these guys are dealing with. It's the one thing as a viewer you can't really feel is that roof. And you see these guys, they cross over it as much as they possibly can so they don't get hit by it. Ricky Carmichael, number four in second place. Number 14 is your leader, Kevin Windham. Windham picking up the victory in moto number one. And here comes Carmichael. High risk, high reward. He is on the gas. Well, he's doing the same thing Kevin did to him in the first moto. He's just, okay, well, if you want to lead, go ahead. Get it out of your system. But I'm still right here. So, like Ricky said after the first moto, you know, he tried to put that smile on, but I could see right through that. He's not happy. And... He does not want to go down again in this moto and ruin his chances of just staying with, Rick, with uh, Kevin. He knows he's going to have to be in a fight for a half hour. So he's just setting up camp right now and letting Kevin know he's going to have to do a lot more than what he's doing already to pull away and make this any easier. Well, Ricky Carmichael made an interesting comment to Cameron Steele. He talked about how impressive Kevin Winnie's bike is. What are you hearing about the possibility, as we look at this one more time in this past, of Ricky Carmichael making the jump over the four strokes? Well, it'll happen eventually, but I think he did a lot of riding on it this year, and it, just, it didn't suit his style. But I think you can see there, it's the riding's on the wall. The four strokes are starting to come around. Now Chad Reed having some success with it, and of course that's helped. If Yamaha would have all done that, all those guys, I think Reed wouldn't have had so much trouble with uh, getting the setup dialed in, you know? But everybody is on the four strokes now, except Ricky, look at that. Oh, Beautiful pass by Carmichael. Dice is inside forces Wyndham to have to break just a little bit, and that's all that Ricky Carmichael needs. Now watch this, David. I'm imagining that Gosler and the rest of the boys are telling him, get away from Wyndham as fast as you can, and there it is on cue. Yep, pull away. He's the only two-stroke. He's leading four four-strokes out there. I'm not sure who's further back than the Yamaha guys, but there's Timmy Ferry, one of those four-strokes. All those 450s chasing him down, and it's still not enough. And Ricky got the whole shot as well. The two-stroke seems to be working just fine. Welcome back to Broom Tiger Sports Complex in Binghamton, New York. Todd Harris along with the champ, David Bailey and Cameron Steele. We're in the midst of moto number two in the 250 class. And your leader, number four, Ricky Carmichael. David, he hasn't been there the whole time. He lost moto number one in a battle with Wyndham right there as he comes into the picture number 14 on board the Honda. And just recently, Ricky Carmichael starting to check out. He's looking like Mike was going to get around him anyway, but it's cool to see Larry putting up a fight this late in the race up there and pretty close to Lutz, holding off Larocco. Still got Fonseca back there. The guy just keeps going and going and going. I'm not sure if he's ever going to stop racing, and I'm not sure that, like uh, Larocco once said, if there's no reason to stop, then why stop? Kevin Windham now looking like he is thinking he's not going to get Ricky Carmichael. This is where it all started. Windham had the lead, and Carmichael didn't need much. 
Yeah, that one caught me a little bit off guard. I thought Wyndham had it. And, uh, I think he did too, and he just dropped into that outside burn that he was a little bit more comfortable with. And Carmichael, he just he never lets you breathe. Yeah, battle here a little bit. He's going, okay, you guys got another lap. Go ahead, fight it out. I won't interrupt any of that. But uh, he just gets the job done. Whatever it takes, he realized he was, he was coming up short. So he just dug a little bit deeper. And that's the thing that, that he and James Stewart in the 125 class are so skilled at. Wyndham is awesome, but he doesn't have that little bit of edge at the times when he really needs it, like today. Well, K-Dub, a 1-2 for second overall. You look a little disappointed. What happened out there? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, after the first moto, you know, I was on all-time high, and uh, I just got beat. You know, I, I hear him say it time and time again, you know, or the few times that I have beat him, and, and uh, no excuses for me that my bike was working great. Uh, I just kept plugging away. Uh, he got hung up with some lappers. I kind of caught up with him, and then I, I blew a berm out bad in the back section and uh, kind of opened back up and lost some motivation, took the wind out of my sails. But that's the way it goes. We'll keep charging, try to finish out the season strong, and uh, looking forward to next year. Well, guys, another amazing performance by RC Ricky Carmichael. Check out these stats. 36, 250 outdoor national wins and 95 wins overall. Ricky, you look like you're in awesome shape. You're just running away right through the end of the moto. Yeah, I uh, put in some really good laps at the end of the moto. Kevin was riding good. I got the whole shot, and uh, he got by me, and then uh, I was able to get back behind by him really quick and uh, rode a hard race. He's riding good, but uh, it's awesome to beat him heads up like that. You know, going back to moto one, how bad do you hate getting second place? I mean, you love to win. Uh, I, I mean, everybody loves to win, but, you know, I, it, it's fun racing, you know. And just because I don't win every time, it's no big deal, you know. I, I do love to win, but nobody can win everything. And I tell you, it was, it, it's fun to do battle like that and have, some, you know, have a rival like that. You guys going back and forth was awesome to watch. I look forward to getting to Steel City. That's going to be a great race. Uh, it's going to be really good. Uh, it's a little tighter than uh, my, kind of, my kind of track. I'm looking forward to it, but Kevin will be really good there also. So uh, it, it should be interesting. Hopefully the weather will be good and we'll see what happens. I bet you wish it for to be good and hot, right? Uh, well, definitely, but, uh, you know, all in all, we want to be consistent next weekend and uh, try to uh, try to wrap up that title. Close it in on a great job, Rick. Uh, thanks. Good to see you again this weekend. I'll see that is, but, you know, it would be a big shock at the same time. Look how long he's been at it. Here we go again. Moto number one of the 250 class from Steel City Raceway is off and running. Big left-hand sweeper there. There's Carmichael, drops into second. Now he slides into first place just ahead of number 15. That's Timmy Ferry on the Yamaha. So it's Carmichael and Ferry going one and two. It looked like Ferry just kind of gave that to Ricky. That corner is so off camber. He was doing all he could to hang on to the lead. Believe me, he just couldn't get it leaned over in time and the four stroke might be a little tougher to get in and out of all these tight rutted corners the dirt is real sticky today ricky carmichael your leader number four on board the honda in second place number 15 tim ferry on the yamaha and carmichael is looking to close this thing out david with emphatic statements of i am the champ kevin windham had a good run but this is my title to claim and he may do it today well one thing he doesn't have to carry into today is Kevin Windham getting fast lap times on his Saturday practice. There was no practice yesterday because of all the rain. The track's in excellent condition right now. But these guys are spending a little bit less time than normal getting used to everything. And right now, it seems to be working in Ricky's favor. He doesn't have any confidence problems. He's got the lead, got a little buffer back there in Tim Ferry. Should be a, no problem for him to wrap up the title today. Ricky Carmichael out in front looking very smooth as always. David, the way he's riding today, the title looks like it's almost a foregone conclusion. This kid is certainly on a mission. I'd like to have one of those second place slumps. <laughs> those, those aren't so bad, I'm thinking. And, and the, you know, with Ricky being in the position he's in, winning so much, his expectations are about the same as the people around him. So if he just has a bad moto, he doesn't just have to look with inside of himself and figure out where that motivation is going to come from. Everybody around him is going, come on, get back out there and win. Like you know how. And this is a great battle, David. Well, you can see how hard Kevin's working to try to get around Roncata, so it's a testament to how well Roncata's riding, but also how tough it is for riders to try to make a pass around here. And, you know, Kevin is, uh, I think he's going to be able to pull away a little bit now, so that, that whole sequence there, we just watched, is just killing him. But while that was happening, Carmichael was putting seconds on him. Listen right now to the Honda, Timmy Ferry, number 15 on the Yamaha, trying to work his way back up, David. It looks like Wyndham may have the line. Well, Kevin, he's got it going to the inside down at the bottom there, but 
Yeah, it, it, that was great. I think he caught Ferry a little bit by surprise the first pass, and Ferry woke up a bit and was like, wait a minute, I want that back. Really made Kevin earn it. So Wyndham is in second place. Timmy Ferry in third. Both gentlemen are on a four-stroke, and both gentlemen now chasing Ricky Carmichael, who is your leader. You know, it's a little intimidating at first when you have those guys pass you and check out the way they do. We've got a battle for first, something we haven't been able to say in a long time. Ricky Carmichael, number four, now being closed in on number 14. Kevin Wyndham, who easily could be his nemesis of the year. Ricky talked about at the top of the show with Robbie Floyd about every season has its ups and downs. Well, the downs this year have been by courtesy of Kevin Wyndham, who took two outdoor overall nationals away from Carmichael. And Wyndham has been on fire, not the best of starts, but he's now worked himself up to second place and has really put the pressure on Carmichael. Yeah, the start killed him. I knew he would be fast here on this racetrack. The last time he raced here, he won both motos. Look at this, look to the inside. Unbelievable racing. The folks here getting the best. Look at the inside pass by Carmichael. Squares it off and dives back on the inside. Wyndham has something for him to answer with. Yeah, Wyndham landed so hard back there off that double. You could hear him sound like he bottomed out. He's fighting for this. The crowd is loving what they're hearing. Listen to this impact from Kevin. Damn. He landed hard. There's no way he could stop. Good heads up move by Carmichael, knowing that Kevin was coming in there a bit hot. He pushed him into that. Cut back to the inside. Still racing each other. And this is what everyone wanted to see. It didn't look like it was going to happen in the beginning. Ricky was checking out, but Kevin is very comfortable on this type of racetrack. So it's Carmichael and Wyndham going head to head as we come down to the final laps here at Steel Cities and Carmichael, not sure where Wyndham came from. It was out of the blue. He passed Timmy Ferry and then just showed up on Carmichael's back doorstep. Ricky now starting to put a little distance between himself and Wyndham, but Kevin will not go away. You know, looking at the aggressiveness, how can you look at Ricky and go, well, he's just not aggressive enough. He's always aggressive enough. The difference is in their line. Ricky's lines are a little bit more cut and hack, and everything that Kevin's doing is flowing really nice, and the momentum is better. The board said game time, and that is directed towards Wyndham as he comes in hot on Carmichael. Your leader, number four, number 14, Wyndham in pursuit. This is a great battle. Two of the best in the business going head-to-head, -head, David, as they come down. One more time, Wyndham tries that inside line. Wow, I thought he was going to get it done. It worked so good on Tim Ferry, not on Carmichael. That's the difference, folks. Ricky will not let you have it. You've got the prestige and the, you know, just doing it for your, taking one for the country and going over there and trying to, trying to kick butt. But at the, at the second time, you know, I, I kind of feel this huge family man thing coming on, you know, with the timing and everything and, and still trying to get things done for next year, which is not finalized even yet. So um, a lot of things in my you know, near future kind of up in the air. So it just kind of seemed best to uh, decline that. I can understand where he's coming from. I mean, it's better to have a little bit of Kevin than none, and he's finally back just for the outdoor season. It looks like he's still trying to work things out to ride Supercross and Nationals next year. And if that was all handled and his baby daughter wasn't brand new and the family thing was new to him, I believe he'd be going over there and, and treat that as a great honor. Well, that interview took place back at Millville, but uh, Rick Carmichael will do a very capable job in leading that team over to Belgium, wishing them the best of luck. Meanwhile, Rick Carmichael having no problem here at Steel City Raceway. Kevin Wyndham closed in on him a few laps ago, and Carmichael got the wake-up call and has quickly distanced himself. So Ricky Carmichael looking to pick up another set of checkers right now, looking very good, very smooth. He has not been passed but one time momentarily by Kevin Wyndham, and that was uh, a very quick loss of the lead. He has loved this track, and they certainly love him today because he has been the man. Carmichael will pick up the victory here in moto number one of the 250 class. And folks, it's getting very close to championship time as Carmichael has looked very good. Kevin Windham, we cannot discount the job that he has done. He was absolutely fabulous, but the day belongs to Carmichael, at least in moto number one. When we return to Delmont, Pennsylvania, we'll talk with our winner. Welcome back to Delmont, Pennsylvania. Scott USA National. Todd Harris along with the champ, David Bailey and Robbie. Robbie Floyd who's on the podium. 
what we were talking about. Congratulations, Ricky Carmichael. Got that moto win. And I was talking to Goose. I said, that's a, a chess match you didn't want to be in, but it's kind of hard telling a champion to back it off a little bit, isn't it? Uh, yeah. You know, Kevin Kevin was outright faster than me. He caught me from a ways back. He must have been 10 seconds behind me, and uh, he reeled me in. So I was going to let him pass me, and then it seemed like he slowed down. So uh, he'll be ready for the next moto. All right, I think he'll be a little more the next moto. I got a question about that Supercross session. You looked over at it. Was it one of those, come on, guys, let's do this? Nah, no, nah, just having fun, you know. It's just like, you know, let's race and have a good time. And uh, I think he was saving it for the next moto because uh, last week he won the first moto and I won the second. And uh, I think he's looking for that overall. So uh, I'll have to find some speed for the second, second moto. All right, KW, you made up all that time. Ricky was expecting you to put on the hard battle, and uh, you did that. But where did you lose it a little bit towards the end? Well, I got caught up with a, with a lapper and uh, made one or two mistakes, all, you know, all on me. And that, that's the thing that I'm kind of upset with is that I uh, I let that take the wind out of my sails, you know. And Ricky was able to open it up in that time, and uh, you know, it was just like I was fighting it after that, you know. And I, I wish I could keep stay mental, a little bit more mental focused and, and not let stuff like that bother me and, and, and get out of my groove. And that's exactly what happened. That moto. important the start's going to be. He's going to need to get one. Wyndham has put together six moto wins. A lot of those have come with hole shots. And we are off and racing. Moto number two from Steel City Raceway. Already riders down on the ground and out of the pack comes number 14. The big four stroke doing its job. Kevin Windham is your leader. Right behind him, number four, is Ricky Carmichael settling to second place. Well, now you got a couple of guys, the best out there, working on a couple of problems. You got Ricky going, I need more speed. You got Kevin going, how can I not let the little things bug me? Well, you got a big thing bugging you right now. Carmichael got second off the start. Kevin's probably it's nice to be able to beat the guy when it's a tough fight like this, but at the same time, be nice just once in a while to get the whole shot and have Ricky be about 10. You know, it just <laughs> doesn't seem to happen, though. Ricky's always there applying pressure. And that's why he is so close to wrapping up yet another national title. Carmichael sits in second place. Will he be content to stay there, or will the fighter and Ricky Carmichael come out and say, you know what, might as well finish up on the top spot on the podium when they give me that number one plate. That's what's in the hand right now. Ricky Carmichael, he finishes in the top nine. The outdoor national title is his. Meanwhile, Kevin Windham looking for his seventh moto win here in the outdoor circuit. Looking good so far. Just flows right into that berm, get back, get back on the power. Already opened up just enough of a gap over Ricky that, you know, it's leads you to believe that this is not going to be that easy for Carmichael. If he was all over him at this point, it'd be like, okay, well, you can see what's going to happen. But Ricky's having to ride hard right here just to stay inside of him. It, one good part about being this Look at this, Carmichael starting to reel in Kevin Windham as they come through this very tricky section. The two Hondas, one a four-stroke, one a two-stroke. And right now, Ricky Carmichael looks like he is really on the gas trying to close it in. Listen to the start one more time, David. Windham getting down around the outside. Going into that second corner, Ricky across the top. <laughs> Just split and Ezra Lusk right there. Ezra going, man, that's the last time I'm wearing yellow. Windham to the outside, Carmichael to the inside. A Honda sandwich right there. Ezra just not fast enough to that off-camera corner, obviously. Gets past, goes from first to third. And where is he? He's right learning now. fast, learning the hard way, but there's no other way. This is Kevin Windham, who currently sits in first place, has two overall victories this season, would like to make it three in the all-important second moto here, Steel City Raceway, Delmont, Pennsylvania. Todd Harris along with the champ, David Bailey, and Robbie Floyd. And what a day it will be if Ricky Carmichael wraps up yet another title. But right now, look at the gap that Kevin Windham has. It is getting huge. And maybe Ricky Carmichael's saying, you know what, eight seconds, second place is just fine, but I highly doubt that. We'll be back with more of Second Moto in the 250 class right after this short break. Wyndham is your leader. Mike's not stalling, as David pointed out, up and running quick once again. Well, here comes Ricky Carmichael. He has started the charge eight seconds behind Kevin Wyndham. He was just laps ago, and he's starting to close back in. Now will Ricky realize the championship on top of the podium as the victor, or will he relinquish it to Kevin Wyndham? And look at Wyndham ride. It's flawless. This is the, one of those Kevin Windham flawless days, and Ricky has reeled him back in. He past Voss as well, so Voss seen red literally on the track. Kevin Windham coming in. His lead, though, has now shrunk down to just over three seconds, so Carmichael shaving almost five seconds off of Kevin Windham's lead in the last few laps. Listen to him on the power. Pin is trying so hard. Just, you know, it's, it's not that his speed is going to catch him up to Kevin. 
all he's got to do is get close and the crowd and the nerves and and the, the possibility of losing the lead all that stuff's going to play in, on kevin's mind like it did in the first moto i don't think he's completely immune to that right now in this moto just because it's another moto that still happens so that you know all he's got to do is get close and then the rest of it's just going to happen all by itself and then he'll be in the driver's seat there's nothing really to lose everything to gain we talked about at the top of this moto, Ricky just needed to finish in the top nine, so folks watching at home might say, why is this kid going breakneck speed, high risk, high reward? Ricky doesn't like to lose, folks, and uh, I know last year in the Supercross Series, it kind of left a bad taste in his mouth, David, in Las Vegas. He got second place, but he got the title, and I think he didn't feel good about that. I think right now what he's trying to say is, you know what, I'm not going to get the title, the number one plate, finishing second here and not getting the overall. This is what happened a few laps ago. Kevin overjumping that plateau a little bit, coming down. Lucky he didn't crash. Now you can understand why Ricky made up so much time. And ever since, it's just been a little bit more nerve-wracking for Kevin. He's been able, unable to ride the way he was riding when he had that big lead. I talked about Ricky. All he's going to do is get pretty close, and the rest of it take care of itself. That's happened now. Ricky Carmichael picking his way through the ruts, and look at that move. Just a little bit more on the power band, and he just pops right into first place. So Carmichael goes into first, and now Wyndham will be the chaser. And this is the thing where, yeah, Wyndham is, is impressive. He's been able to win and beat Ricky, and my hat's off to him. But in order to really beat Ricky enough and beat, you know, the, be the champion and beat Stewart, he's going to have to win battles like this. He had this race. It looked like it was over, and Ricky just decided he wanted it. And Ricky's want is a little bit better than everybody else's want. And Kevin Wyndham talked to Robbie Floyd about getting mental focus and having more focus in critical situations. And you can see what one or two lapses will do. Ricky Carmichael is certainly on the gas. This kid will not let it go. He has got the title all but wrapped up. Finishes this race in this position, in the top nine positions. And the race and the title will be his. Ricky Carmichael putting on a show for the folks here in Delmont, Pennsylvania. This is round number 11. Carmichael, Wyndham, one and two. We'll be back for the conclusion of the 250 Mona number two after this short break. So Ricky Carmichael basically takes a parade lap here to the delight of the fans here at Steel City Raceway in Delmont, Pennsylvania. Carmichael has been phenomenal throughout his entire career. As he mentioned, racing since the age of 10 and what he's accomplished in the last 14 plus years has been absolutely amazing. He has rewritten the record books. And something we thought after Jeremy McGrath came through would never be done, but Ricky Carmichael has done it and done it with a lot of class and like you say, a lot of style. The 2003 250 motocross champion, Ricky Carmichael. There's Scott Taylor wearing that number one Fox jersey. Patting him on the shoulder, he'll get to throw that on because he's the new champ. What a feeling. I've, I've won a few of these things, and, and it doesn't get any better. That's what you work on. Hey, Kevin, I can see the look on your face. I know you wanted the win out there. Everything was looking good, but what happened? Well, I mean, he just uh, he wanted to win bad today. You know, he was uh, got the number one play today, and uh, no one wants to do that by losing, you know. And, uh, did all I can to keep him behind me. It just uh, wasn't working for me today. You know, I was, I was fighting a little bit, the deep ruts, but you, know, you just got to ride 100% to, to beat him, you know. I, but I was still able to uh, hold in second. But a good ride for uh, Patrick Connection, Honda, no fear, Lee Douglas. Well, our congratulations to Kevin Window on making it such a great series. Meanwhile, Ricky Carmichael takes a tour of Steel City Raceway and thanks the fans for their support. What a great race it was. Okay, we're trying to get them all. Uh, Ricky, congratulations thanks. on defending your title. Uh, may not have been a perfect season, but with one to go, you've got her sewed up. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Duke. We're going to miss you next year, but uh, I'm sure you'll be having a lot funner time, you know, starting your new career, and uh, thanks for everything. Thank you to the AMA and all my fans. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Well, I want to congratulate Ricky, man. What a, what a job. So many championships, and he's still going, you know. There's a lot of comparisons with him and Stewart and all that stuff, but until Stewart beats him and, and owns him, Ricky's still the man. There you see Ricky's resume, and the records just keep piling up. Let's join Robbie Floyd, who's with the champ. 
Well, congratulations to Ricky Carmichael. Another year, another win. That is 10 AMA Pro Racing Championships. Four 250 motocross titles in a row. Nobody has ever done it. You got to be stoked, bud. How's the all team? <laughs> I'm so happy. It was a uh, it was a tough season. Kevin was riding really, really good. We've, we've been dominating the series. And, uh, that 450 his is running good, but I tell you, uh, Honda stepped it up halfway through the season and uh, got me a two-stroke. That is unbelievable, man. The thing is running really, really good, and uh, it's a combination of everything. You know, my mechanic, Honda, Don Lop, Fox, Oakley, everyone who helps me, all my people, and I could go, the, the list goes on, and uh, everybody he knows who they are that has helped me and without those people it, it wouldn't be possible you say this doesn't get old how do you keep pushing yourself i mean you won a championship every year you've been a pro yeah i have and it's uh it, i never expected to do this good and you know i just love what i do i take it very very seriously but uh, i definitely live it up at home i have a i enjoy my life i enjoy this you know and uh, I, I i try to give it 100 percent and and do the best i can and I, that's how i stay motivated to just keep winning and the critics uh, saying i can't do this and this guy's gonna do that and uh, i just work my butt off and uh, try to be a gracious champion and do my best congratulations another year another championship part of the course ricky carmichael 125 250s outdoor motocross he has never been beaten a series and our thanks to robbie floyd filling in for cameron Steele. and as we've heard the troy event has been canceled so david the season is over your final thoughts well, congratulations to Carmichael once again. He's, he's bad, deserves everything he gets. He works the hardest and wins the most. And it was great to have Kevin Windham back. He's for real. I, I can't wait to see him race next year. I think he's as good or better in Supercross. And uh, it's all the privateers, you know, Nick Way and Larry Ward, Styles and John Dad, all those guys doing a great job again. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. So long from Pennsylvania. <laughs>